Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Well, I uh, have entered a new phase of burning my face in the uh, hopes of preventing skin cancer. By the way, everyone, go see your dermatologist, and if there's something to uh, do with your face, precancerous areas, that uh, they can treat that. They can do it a, a series of ways. They can do it by uh, freezing the little areas of your uh, face off, uh, which which uh, gets rid of that uh, troublesome skin, and it so goes my back. Papa and it's had fine. What? Had done. That's what my papa had done. The That's freezing. what he did. Now, yeah. uh, someone last night was telling me there's a new thing called blue light. It's not new. Blue light yeah. therapy, where they put you under this uh, this intense light, and uh, that takes care of it. Apparently, according to a guy that I was speaking with yesterday, they've made uh, improvements in that. And now, if it you can get the blue better. light, you also it cures your cancer, but you get forty percent off at Kmart, right? The Thank blue you. light special. Uh, and uh, and so it was. Uh, I was wondering, um, you know, why you interrupted, but now I know. So uh, the idea is, <laughs> wasn't not, worth it. We're not going to do that again. Uh, but the third one is something I was unaware of until I went to the dermatologist, which was this, uh, I think it's called Florasil, which is this cream you put on, and you put it on for five days. And what I was really not totally clued in with was when the fun would start. And the fun starts after the five days is over. Mm. And right now it's been a total of two weeks because two weeks ago I started – and then a week ago, I started the reaction. And the reaction has been, well, you saw it on the show. The early days of it, when it really started to pop, I looked like Freddy Krueger. Then I went into the, uh, the, the, the raised areas where it's, and now I'm into the sloughing off yeah. phase of, uh, of this. And it actually is, uh, I think, beginning to. You're molting. Ch- I'm molting. I'm shedding like yeah. a snake. Yes. Did, uh, did the doctor indicate to you that it was going to be five days and out? Did he ever even tease you with the fact that the fun began on day 10? Um, I don't. Not day 10, because this oh, it would is be day, day 10. Four, okay, so like it would maybe be day six. Day six, after uh, the cream it would was be done. Day six. He. I could show you the picture he gave me. He put a smiley face up, like a like a child's picture of a head, of a right. face. And then he drew XXXX across my forehead and XXX all the way down my cheeks. No X's here, no X's on the nose, which probably would have been a good idea, but I'm not the doctor. And then that that was it. And then he has another product he wants to take, and this is the clinical uh, explanation he gave to me. There's another thing I have to do briefly that is not related to skin cancer after the dust settles actually wrote it on the paper after the dust settles when you saw that did you realize you would be the source of the dust i don't you know may it's I, such a drag may I ask you really a, yes a non-hacky question sure uh, i would i actually care about your skin so did Thank the you. doctor act did the doctor give you instructions because i know this from um uh, my sister and my and my and my dermatologist I once had um, what, what something that was just scabbing up, and then I went in the sun. It was like probably playing soccer when I used to play soccer on a regular basis, and then I had a skin spot, like an what looked like an age spot almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, I and believe they my said, esthetician wife would refer to that as I want to say hy- uh, hyper or hypopigmentation, where. Got it. Because it, 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 it's either hyper or hypo. I yeah, you just confused. I was just told that to keep all scabs out of the sun, or else I, it would stain your skin. I was told that if I go into the sun, and I'm so glad you brought that up because it yeah. makes a perfect segue. I was told by the doctor that yes, I can go play my favorite sport, but I have to triple up on the sunscreen and uh, wear a wide-brimmed hat. Yeah, and that because... is why uh, I wrote this down. On the golf course now, I look like an old lady in the garden. <laughs> Do you, and I have brought good. a visual aid. Oh, good. you have? Good. Good. Let's see it. 
Yeah, because the last thing you want is to go through all this pain and then look like Mikhail Gorbachev. Yeah, you don't uh, want yeah, that like wine spot. Permanent... Yeah. See, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm thinking, I hope it worked. And if it didn't, yeah, I'm going to have Gorby really... right here. I'm going to have Gorby right here. really covers as much as we think it should. What, the hat? Yeah. yeah it doesn't. And you know what, Have You, tri- you messed with the dick is what like... it doesn't cover. Yes. I think that it's the hat, believe it or not, for that style of hat, leans a little fashionable because of the shape of the brim. And it's not as bad as it could be. That wear the hats like this. Yeah, you don't want that. How you doing? But don't There's you still have... a bright golden phase on the meadow. All right. Do you still have your, was it called the bony hat or the boonie hat that you bought oh, at the, Costco? Oh, the floppy one? No. No, that's uh, that's long gone. Oh, because that would have been ideal. A little I was more trying coverage. to like tidy up the studio the other day. You know what's long gone? What? Uh, light bulbs in our house. The, the, the crap we throw away sometimes, like, somehow light bulbs are missing. Uh, Carl and I do not speak, so we don't see a lot of each other. Uh, and, and but the light bulbs are nowhere to be found. Don't you? You should have a set place. I have a set place where I keep all our light bulbs, and I always know that that's where you go. I mean, where do you, do you do you have a spot for them, or do they just? I you thought we did. I thought we did in the laundry room. Yeah. No. Yeah. Precisely. You run out. Yeah. Or more from a place By the way, called Amazon. Uh, what's it like having uh, Rob in studio with you now? Oh, yeah, not much has changed. Um, when I walked in, his key light was off, and I was like, oh, not much has changed. He goes, oh, I get out of the habit. I was like, oh, details. <laughs> That's Tough week it. for you, isn't it? Tough week, Rob? Tough week no, for you this week? And if you could lower your not microphone predict- a little bit. so we- You are lying. You Thank are you. lying. Not Let's particular. not cover your face, for God's sake. That's why so I please. said he, Rob comes in and likes to use the uh, Jerry Lewis line, how you been? Uh, he says, that's that's what he says to everyone. I said, how you been? And he said, okay. So I knew that he'd had no, a- No, I said he'd fine. Had a, how was the commute a, No, in? you said okay. You didn't say fine. You said okay. And I Meant knew you okay. had a put-upon week. Um, the commute in, I forgot the delight of an hour and 15 minutes with the sun in your eyes. And people going at 15 miles an hour because- the sun is in their eyes because all of the traffic in Washington, D.C. has been designed to drive into the sun yes. in the morning and into the sun <laughs> at night. And uh, thank God at least it's a school day and there were lots of buses. Yeah. It was a delightful but one, ride. But once a month isn't That's terrible, not right? Bad I think the first all. time in, what, six now months? Now you're talking about no, all months. the people of Northern Virginia. Yes. Because they make the commute east in the morning and west in the afternoon. It's perhaps not the what best move. as uh, no, it was far. Mac. Mac, hey, what Mac, are you doing in there? That was a there? cool sound. What was that? That was my computer. We're using a different setup now. I'll okay. try and mute that. And Mac's I like having it. a day, too, so let's be easy hey, on Hey, we're Mac all today. happy. Yes. Happy pappies. I, uh, it's funny that you mentioned the commute because um, you actually have the fortune of not having to commute since, uh, quote, unquote, people have started coming back to work. Yeah. And um, this have is you, Rob we're you, talking about. Yeah, yeah, Rob has. Yeah. Um, do you notice the difference? Do you feel it? Because Thursday's supposed to be a day of, you know, You know labor. what? It was a, uh, for a while, it was thin in the morning. It yeah. was nice coming in. Yeah. I think just enough people are going back now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. A lot of squinters in the so morning. So you felt it? Yeah, I did. All right. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's uh, good. It's good for the economy. The skin is sloughing off my body. I'm now shedding like a snake. So, but I'm realizing that uh, when I saw the hat on camera, you know, I realized perhaps it was inadequate, and I should have gone with uh, with this look. Full coverage. Oh. Yeah, it, it would just be a shame to see more spots the after this. queen in her bed <laughs> with a shoulder of oh, and um, bind her with her bones. All right, I'm sorry. No, oh, what I, got, I was getting that from? I was getting uh, M&M. There's yeah. a song that, I, look. It might be my feet. It might be circulating the, the internet, the but queen? it's this—it's this bass acapella group. Uh, hoist the colors. That's and they play it when they'll show. What like station? if you see boats what at station? sea in heavy <laughs> waves, they will play these deep. Is it like sinister, a shanty? Huh? Is it like a sea shanty? You know, but you know it's frustrating. I could play it for you, but I'm very aware that r- the rights of things yeah. are. Just play it. We can always we can always bleep it out. Yeah. All right. Just one moment. Just please. do the, do the yeah. show for us. Who just, cares? Uh, okay. All right. Just give yeah. Me a, give me a. It's weird because Mike and I have a weird uh, overlap musicality, and I don't know what he's talking about at all. Yeah. Um. Maybe it's. Uh, I, 
one I'm, I'm just the only are they, are they in some sort of like a Spanish galleon and they're singing songs? I have a technical question for you. Yes. And it doesn't yeah. it's not going to slow the show down too no, much, no, but no, no. if I play something uh from the computer that's got my camera in it, will, yes. you, will you hear that? No. 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 Damn it. No. Damn it. I have to play. Not it hooked on up this to one. the board. Okay. Board? Right. Board. Let Gotta hook it up get, to the board. Let me get rid of that. I um it's good to see you though. Nice to see you uh, too. It's nice to have somebody in studio. It's um it's funny because when people do come in and uh you know, the whole crime situation, people don't like talking about yeah, that. Right, but, right, right, right. Um because they're scared of the city now. Well, I was carrying a knife from my car to the elevator. Did you talk to your wife and be like, hey, I'm going into the big city? She she opened champagne. He's like, don't be careful. <laughs> Talk to everybody. Make sure to be your pleasant self. <laughs> Encourage conversation. You bring the sunshine, <laughs> dear. <laughs> no, she. Uh, is she the is she even aware? Yeah, I told her yesterday yeah. that I'm going in, and I believe her words were be careful. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So, what'd you do for? Did you the give her? The word was not even said in our house. That's. That's a, you didn't even just give her like a quick smooch. No, no, no. But we did. Uh, we discussed the celebration mm. of Sebastian's birthday. Got it. The got dog it, turned got four it. yesterday. But nothing about V Day. Nothing about V Day. No. Mac, did you call your mom and wish her a happy Valentine's Day? <laughs> we actually went out to dinner last night. Oh, that see, oh, Red man. Lobster, the good son. Close. We went to a place called Shooter McGee's, who has Lobster Wednesdays. Oh, even better. You know, Shooter, Shooter McGee's. I remember. I know. Shooter. I know that in D.C. we had we're. Proxim- we have a good proximity to the ocean, and if you want the best lobster, yeah. you go to Shooter McGee's. That's what they're known for, Lobster yeah. Wednesdays. Lobster Wednesdays. Today being Thursday. What? Um, was, it, is- was it just you and your mom, or your dad, your mom, and you? My dad was working, which I found odd, because he's retired. Well, no, because he's, he's, this is what I'm saying. I'm working, and I'm retired. Yeah, uh, Mike's been retired for 10 years, and he's been <laughs> No, I've been, you- reco- I've, I've been retired for one month. Yeah, you know that's not anybody's business. Don't make your sound, yourself sound older than than you actually are. Come on, sorry, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not trying to. Go into we're, all not the trying to we're, try, we're not trying to age out. You know what, Mike? <laughs> Wasn't it just? Over <laughs> the I'm not gonna lie. You know, who no, am but I? no one, who no am one I? asked. Greg you. Hughes? Am I no Anthony one Kamea? You. I'm gonna pretend no, I'm no. the younger. I want to see if you don't come in here with with an electric skateboard tomorrow. We're gonna have a problem. <laughs> And to be perfectly that was so honest, funny, was, I mean, I, you never think of guys that are approaching forty or in their forties that try. That's a silly time, I think, to pretend you're yeah. younger because I think yeah. it's a very vital yeah, time you in a person. Yeah, a high school student in your forties. Stop it! Hey, can I? Uh, I found that thing. Can I uh, break in with that? that sure. uh, yes, of course, of course, really, uh, of course. This is called uh, uh, "Hoist the Colors: The Bass Singers of TikTok." Doesn't sound sinister. Huh? Very sinister. The king and his men stole the queen from her bed. Ooh. It gets lower. I really hope, Oscar, we can play this, right? No. <laughs> but this does sound like that one song, Let My People Go. That's enough. Yeah, That's short enough where they're not going to bite our ass. Ferris right? Bueller, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 not, th- this, we, we should actually just share this with the people that, because we've had enough people on online ask us what happened to the music. Yeah. And this is a little behind the music. <clears throat> Digital rights management is not just aggressive, oh, it's over. So. What you're not hearing right now is music because we don't want to get pulled down from every single media platform that yeah. we are on because somebody somebody in Russia has the rights to the song. And they hold grudges. Very frustrating. They remember. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. I do you can be it. deplatformed. Yes, precisely. And That's the that, word for we it. We can't afford to have that happen. No, no. So we keep pushing. No. But it does sound like, let my people go. Let my people go. That's from Ferris Bueller. Remember that? Oh, when Cameron does that. Yeah, oh, that's you right. You're right. Says, Ferris Bueller's right. Day Have off. you seen the the film? We're to More music. Now, that's ha- the one that sounds like computer generated. Have you seen? Probably is. The movie Ferrari yet? Yes. 
You mean okay. Ford versus Ferrari? No, Ferrari. No, I have not seen that one. With Adam Driver. Get it? Because it's yes. Ferrari. This guy was, um, oh, what's the what's the the clinical term? Coxman. Um, he is this the is this Enzo? They're Enzo talking about? Ferrari, the man, the main yes. dude. The uh, yes. so this is back in the fifties and sixties. Yes, then. yes, Enzo you're gonna Ferrari. love it. You would love it too, Rob. Simply for the costume play, like it is. You know, in the Mike, setting. I love a movie with costumes. You do. Yes. You like a period piece. I it do. is a period piece. I love yes, a period indeed. piece. And you stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and don't say it. Hear graf- it. I'll give you a graphic. line from a period piece of yes. a movie I loved. All right. Here's a line from a period piece. All right. Yes. Why don't you love me anymore? Sorry. There we go. What, the, what piece is that? Do you get the joke? Rob I don't, gets I, the I, joke. I, I Explain don't, the I don't, joke to him, please. I don't. I don't is it? it is no, no. He doesn't know. He doesn't even know. Okay. Is it have really? To do? You I morons. Think you were... This is a joke oh, about premenstrual you're insulting tension. Us. Oh, okay. Well, I thought oh, you were going there. A period there, but... piece. I was yeah. doing premenstrual tension. Oh. I would have I gotten that joke land. earlier. Yeah, hey, earlier in the month, I would have gotten last it. Night. I fully expected it. I was it really thinking was about a movie. I was too. Because yeah. you like those Pride and Prejudice like No, movies. no. I was period like, was that Casablanca? Be, uh, Sense and Sensibility, one of my favorite yeah. uh, movies. Mm. I was doing the stick about that. Two. Oh, with Jackie Mason. Did I tell the, you the the, uh, the other joke from uh, the guy at the uh, golf course maintenance uh, shack that was uh, telling me another joke? No. Guy goes into a grocery store, uh, lives in the same neighborhood as a psychiatrist that he knows pretty well, bumps into him at the grocery store, and the guy says to him, uh, hey, how you doing, Sam? And I said, well, Doc, I got to tell you, it's really, it's really gotten rough. My wife is, uh, is just pretty rough on me. She tells me what to do all the time. Uh, nothing I can do is ever really good enough. It's been really, really frustrating. He said, uh, Listen, why don't you come by the office, you know, lie down on the couch and tell me, you know, tell me really what's going on. I'll, I'll give you an hour. He said, no, I, I really can't do that. He says, why can't you come to the office and lie on the couch? He said, my wife won't allow me on the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I get that. That's a joke. Sorry, but uh, the other joke didn't land. You both, If you both don't get it, my, my judgment is yes. if you both don't get it, then I don't. And I realize Rob sometimes laughs. When I like, I used to laugh on the show when something he doesn't understand, and I do that all the time. That's the job. Uh, but, so I yeah, you got to keep it moving. But for right. both of us to be, to be like, you know what it was, Mike? It was too subtle. Mm. You got to play a little broad yeah. with us. Sometimes. Also, you're not a big minstrel uh, joke person. You mean the ministration? Yes, minstrel is different. No, oh. he was. How would I make the joke better? How would, uh, minstrel, minstrel. I like a good he likes the menzies. Piece. Let's ask my wife. All right, moving on. Here's another um, one. Can I write another yes. one that you might yes, get? Uh, here we go. Right. Here we go. All right. Hey, listen, guys. If we're going to talk about period pieces, uh, why don't you just pad for a while? <laughs> there you go. That's no, better. Thank no, you. Better. You didn't was, get that, that one was, either? I got it. It's just you're so much better than those jokes. Wow. Yeah. yeah wow. You, you, I'm you, really disappointed. I, I, I hold you at a higher bar. And actually, Mike, if you really were to break That's down a Rob joke. the job, I would tell that joke and then you would say you're gross. That's how that works. Well, I was just, I was giving a more simple, uh, less yeah, what, subtle What do you think, uh, Mac? You're 30. Yeah. You're Did not you aged it? out. Uh, I giggled, but that's about it. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? We're, we're coming in today. We're coming into the studio today. But, thank you. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. How about this? Why don't you, why don't you throw the headphones on uh, Dan O'Brien okay, and, and, okay. and Mike, you lay it on him. All right. You're what killing. You're now? killing. You're killing. You didn't kill. Go, right. go ahead. Well, now, if, if you see, when he comes set in him up, cold. Set him up. Set hi, Dan. him up. Hi, Ro- Hi, Mike. How are you? <laughs> Mike. I'm Mike, Dan. Er- early morning, huh? Pretty early. <laughs> he gets in all the time at this hour. Do you get in early every day? How's mom? <laughs> Mom's great. That's what she that's actually, actually, quick shout out. She's lost, uh, I think, uh, 110 pounds with noon. Re- <laughs> Swear to God. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not Sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Love it. Okay. Love it. Would have loved that if it was Derm Glow skin, but that's fine. That's fine. That, hey, that's we okay. love all our advertising. We well, love my all skin our advertising. has never yes. looked better. Yeah, thank you, Carla. That's, that's right. All right, thank you. Get out of here, Dan. You pissed me off in less than 16 seconds. You got it, Rob. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Literally this trying is, to feed my effing family here. This, trying desperately to feed my this family. Is, this is what's great, Mike. And this is why this show is comedy gold. 
everything that could have gone sideways with that one interaction with Dan O'Brien. Absolutely did. Is a snapshot of my right. eight hour day. Yep. <laughs> And now, hey, I'm Dan O'Brien, let me tell you about these fantastic new belts that I got from a company that's not Groove Life. <laughs> but he was happy about his mom, which yeah. is so sweet. Very so how sincere. can you be mad Very at sincere. him? It's so sweet. By the way, she's Hi, lost Debbie. all that weight drinking Gatorade Zero. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but in fairness to her, she has done sit-ups. Mm-hmm. She has, and it's a harder way. It's a right. harder path. Come that's a, that, so the joke. Uh, that's a callback to an old joke uh, that I share with people uh, often. That Oscar Santana, uh, when I when I talk about my uh, my north of seventy pound weight loss, and yeah. uh, Oscar is with not one sit up, that gets a big big <laughs> laugh. And I, I got another one for you. I'm just yeah. a font of this material today. My buddy it. Oli, yeah. we went to his house for the Super Bowl. This is what he says to me. And I'll do I'll do his Mexican accent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, every one of the people that uh, were, were at the party was commenting on uh, just how uh, engaging and uh, mature your son was and how what a very fine gentleman uh, he is. And uh, I, I was just uh, hoping uh, that some of that might someday rub off on you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd say that on the air, Oli. I told you I'd do that. That was so damn funny. He's one of the funniest men I've ever met. He really is. So, yeah, Michael makes a good impression in public. He shows oh, he's his ass. fantastic. He yeah. shows his ass in private, which is the way I used to be. You know? yeah. But if I was ever, you know, it's look you in the eye, shake the hand, you know, not the shy. By the way, I don't like that word when it comes to kids. Shy. They're shy. I think oh, yeah. shy is, uh, you know, you can, shy can be. Well, Oscar knows this. You can, you can. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say <laughs> beat it out of them. No, you can <laughs> breed it out of them. The shyness. Well, you can raise well, them no, not no. to be shy. Yeah, that breed. I think you have to. What is it? Full immersion. <laughs> But I mean, like, shyness. You got to sit there in it. You got to learn to be comfortable with it. Yeah, it's it's every bit is the same as teaching a kid to clean their room or bingo. dress. Yeah, I think bingo. The, I we we are the we're worst in thing as a kid uh, was getting dressed up for every one of my parents' dinner parties. But it was actually a blessing in disguise because was there always a murder at the dinner party? No, but they would force <laughs> you to engage. Yep, my parents did. Yep. My I was lo- we were lucky out, but I, I went as a kid, like, oh, no, another dinner party. Middle of the week, like three or four of them. And it would just be like a whole thing. We'd be sitting there mm-hmm. eating our vegetables. Just and listening. then I would be uh, banished upstairs yeah. uh, in our center chimney. We call it in a center chimney cape. A uh, mm-hmm. very small home, New England style home, and I would I'd be upstairs, and for the rest of the cocktail party, I would hear Mr. McCabe, God rest his soul, down the street going. <laughs> Had the greatest laugh and loved to tell jokes. It was like, <laughs> just that's like me. The way. He would follow up every joke he told me. I love that guy. <laughs> I like that. Mike, can I ask you a question about your yes. center cape? Because yes. center the house, chimney cape. Center chimney cape. Was there a bedroom upstairs that had a chimney going, going through, through it, it, but not access to it? It was bricked yeah. over. I think and the option you... was there, perhaps in the olden times, if you wanted to put. A fireplace in the bedroom, but there, but there was, was like a, a chimney. Going, could in you like go around bedroom, it? In my parents' bedroom, with their Ricky yeah. and Lucy beds that they had for my entire life. My parents never slept in the same bed for my entire, all my adult life. They had uh, they had a Ricky bed and a Lucy bed with a vanity, uh, not a vanity, in the middle. a night table yeah. in between. Yeah, that's yeah. the way and they did it. There wasn't like a, a sex bed. Oh come what? on! What? It's like a third Don't bed? Be gross. Yeah, you know what? Broken home. That really yeah. is. Just, that is completely. Let me go back. And Let me go totally back. Just because just because your mom was bringing home every other dude Stop from Safeway doesn't that mean is that. Not that's okay. how we rolled. Stop it! Safeway. Jesus Christ! Safeway. Oh but Mike, man! I think that earlier your taping house schedule. Pro- earlier you, taping you like these schedule. melons? How about you come on home with me? I'll introduce you to my son Robbie. <laughs> that's not okay. Sex Stop bed. it. But I don't in, the, know. in the cape, I was the last I think, child. I think that our, we bed. probably had similar, <laughs> and that's the name of the show. Sex bed. I think we probably had a similar layout because, as you describe it, Big Daddy's house in Northern Virginia was also a center chimney cape, <laughs> a small home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, that's, and he had no sex bed. <laughs> 
You know what's great is what? as soon as we started talking about your mom, you totally, you totally, you totally <laughs> God, I just know, like we all get it's, nervous because it's your mom. It's your mom. Yeah, but it's oh funny because you were God. talking about Rob's parents and the Rob was like, what? Oh, <laughs> I mean, Mike, no, I'm Dan O'Brien. They have a sex And Mac, bed. that light went off somehow. <laughs> yes. Please fix it. It's early morning. Yeah, Rob's in the dark now. Uh, yeah. which is not an unusual place for him, but, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it happens quite often. Um, for most of the show. All right, Ed McCabe, God bless him, furniture, uh, yeah. office furniture guy, did really, really well. One of the one of the uh, most well-heeled neighbors that we had. Always had stuff, but not, but not flaunting it, just you knew he was, you know, when you live in a middle-class neighborhood, you would always know who had the better stuff. It just, mm-hmm. it was of the course. nature of the beast, yeah. the way it happened. So, uh, Ed McCabe would follow up, and I love the guy. I think that I've, I've, I reference him. I've told this story a bunch of times, but I, I remember how cool it was to have interactions with him because he would tell a joke and then he would laugh at the joke in a hysterical laugh, which maybe mm-hmm. and it was like <laughs> so. Years and years and years ago, I am on the air, and my mom. God rest her soul is getting the mail. This is after my dad had passed away and she's up and our center chimney cape in my little hometown in New England uh, was sitting at the bottom of a little valley, a tiny little valley where you'd have a driveway at the top and you drive down. It, it's not big. OK, imagine everything in miniature. We're right? talking small. Arthur. I'm talking small. But <laughs> the 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 uh, mailbox was at the top of the hill and then. The street was at the bottom of the hill, and my house was at the bottom of the hill. So essentially, the street was on a hill, house Mm -hmm. and street, both on the downside of the hill. My mom goes to pulls in the driveway at the top to get the mail. And she is, I think, at this, she is 80 years old at this point. And she pulls in, stops the car, walks 10 paces over to the mailbox. The car she did not put in park. Mm. Oh. The car is in reverse or it is in drive. I'm not sure which one it was. No. It Probably was, neutral. It, it, was neutral. it was in neutral. It was in neutral. So she, as opposed to being a normal 80-year-old and going, oh, my God, she dashes for the car and tries to get into the seat. It knocks her down. Mm. The door rakes across her forehead, oh. causing an agent, and the the front left tire, uh, part of it goes over her shoulder. She gets really mm. badly hurt. Not dangerously hurt, but she gets badly hurt. Yeah, the banged car, up. The car, <laughs> the car rolls backwards, leaving her at the top of the driveway, and rolls across the street and down into another valley, the hills of my Connecticut. There was a song about it, okay? The whole effing town is hills. Hills, 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 hills. I had great thighs in those days because I was walking over hills all the time. It goes still, into Mike, the valley still. of the neighbor's yard and uh, right down near the brook. And we had brooks, mm-hmm. too. And it sits there. All right, so I am, I think, called while I'm on the show. I get to the airport and I go, I, I, you know, just to see. She's in the hospital. And I, you know, I don't even know if I went home for that one. I'm not sure whether, I don't think I did, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, I remember you, back then, Mike, yeah. they encouraged us to leave. It was sweeps week. Yeah, and take care of our family. Yeah, yeah they really wanted us to make, make all those. Anyway, I, <laughs> yeah, I did go to see her because I flew home to check on her. And I go to the hospital and then I'm coming back and I see uh, Mr. McCabe in his front yard. And I roll down the window. I still call him Mr. McCabe. I said, hey, Mr. McCabe, how you doing? Hey, Michael, uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, listen, uh, listen. he's got that South Boston. Accent. How's your mother? How's your mother doing? Mm-hmm. Is, she, is she doing okay? I said, yeah. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a shock to her, but she's 100% fine. She's going to be out of the hospital soon. She's doing well. He said, yeah, uh, we, we, were, we were taking a walk, and I noticed that, uh, you know, there was this car. Uh, the, the, the O'Mara's car is down in the middle of this ditch. And I said, Mike must be home. <laughs> funny people are funny people. Doesn't matter yeah, what the circumstances, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. So that was my uh, my little story. It I was don't know where it came from. For those of you that have never driven a manual before, I, I imagine it was it a manual, car? automatic, automatic. automatic. Oh, Maybe a it's easy system. to leave it in manual yep. in, uh, with a stick shift all day. Oh yeah. yeah. And didn't you call it a Manuel transmission when you were growing up? No. Oh, okay, just no. checking. Maybe a Mazda. 
It was a Mazda. Mazda. I think it was a Mazda. Very uh, Consumer Reports, very, very well-regarded automobiles, by the way. And she had the need uh, for speed. Cars. What's that? She had the need for speed. No, it's just, I mean, I'm talking about now, present day. We flash forward to present day where I've uh, I've got a book. It's like a magazine you can get in the grocery store. Consumer Reports, uh, Cars of 2024. And it's a big, thick book of... uh, of different ratings on cars, crash safety, uh, reliability scores, which are a big deal, where they go back uh, to 21, 22, and 23, and they show you reliability scores. And then they, uh, they have road test scores. And uh, you'd be very, very surprised to look at these different consumer reports. Uh, I'll ask Oscar this because yes. he's a car junkie too. Yeah. Oscar, uh, because I'm always on guard thinking the fix may be in. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you believe that uh, the Consumer Reports family is immune from corruption? That's the question I have for you. I think we all have influence, but if, I I want to believe that for a company that is built on reputation, and if that was gone, it wouldn't be a company. Okay. You have yeah. to maintain some se- se- separation of church and state. I, for example, Motor Week from PBS. Yes. I it's the longest running auto show and I watch it. Mm-hmm. I DVR it and uh, or YouTube TV it and um and I'll watch it and this past year they gave away all their like cars of the year and they gave it to the Ford Mustang. Mm-hmm. And I was like mm, I What are we doing here? What I, are we doing here? Why well, yeah, yeah, what? The first what thing are, says, what are we doing here? <laughs> But the Mike, first thing I you say back. is Bill Quads. Yeah, nice know, plastic like... switch. <laughs> I go right? back with Consumer Reports, Mike, back I probably. Like, it didn't make sense to me, but I was like, okay, maybe this one isn't the one I'm going to go with. In the early 80s, when Consumer Reports, you could actually take it as a magazine. I don't know if they publish a magazine anymore I'm where you can sure subscribe. I'm not sure they do. You get, it's certainly have got an online uh, Most magazines are dead. Yeah, most of them are dead. But the old days, the magazine Consumer Reports took no advertising. Right. They right. sub- they existed yeah. only on subscriptions, uh, I and I always that, thought that was a, a nod to how you know yeah. how much they could be verified. I think that uh, your motor trends, your car and drivers are influenced. I think there's absolutely sure. no doubt whoever gets schmoozed. These are writers that do these things, but Consumer Reports it's so painstakingly uh, detailed, and I'm working off the top of my head here. But when you're talking about uh, mm-hmm. reliability. Uh, you gotta you gotta hand it to the so, the Japanese. Yeah, you know, so, that's a it. sign of the times. Mm-hmm. Um, Motor Trend, I think, is going to a quarterly distribution. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. They're like more magazine, I'm less to... frequency. Well, so it's Motor Trend and Car and Driver. Those yeah, are the some, two biggies. Those right? are the two guys. There's one I like and one I can't stand. Do you do you also want to have the correlation of? And I might have the magazine wrong, so please feel free to correct me online. One of the one of the major auto magazines we used to get in an airport. Um, the iPad and the advent of the internet on a on a flight murdered the majority of these magazines because they would make the most margins on oh, the yeah. print magazine. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I never had a, uh, or even correlated the two how one would er- erode the other. Because if, if if you've ever bought, um, and, and some of our audience hasn't, kids, if you're with your parents listening right now, they would sell magazines, and they kind of do still in airports, yeah. and your parents and I would buy them, and they would cost $8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then and you're then, like, oh, like, I guess I got to buy it now. We're yeah. here. Yeah. 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 Like Rob Report or something. Yes. Rob, by yes. the way, Rob Report, uh, mm-hmm. created by our own Rob Spiewak. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Is pretty yeah. Cool. This weekend, we were talking about cars that don't flip over. <laughs> <laughs> feature article. exotic cars that don't flip over feature article <laughs> written by the editor yeah, that's right <laughs> Did, unfortunately mike all the print is upside down so you have to turn the magazine over if you want to read the article we have but, to break here but when you flipped your car did yeah. you spin did you did uh, you do that thing where it was no like no a, i no? just slid i just slid of course there was a lot of forward momentum and you know i'm not a light man anymore <laughs> there you go suspended from the uh from the floorboards yeah. why is uh, everyone standing upside down duh? Uh, hey guess what everybody uh you can be very very excited because we're gonna have the uh, round table discussion and later in the broadcast mr santana has brought in irrefutable evidence that yes. uh, what we were talking about yesterday not bs uh, we'll yes. be right back everybody 
This podcast is uh, brought to you by Groove Life. We love you, Groove Life. Why? Because Dan O'Brien says the Groove Wallet is a slick, aluminum, low-profile pro- wallet, perfect for everyday use. <laughs> True story. One simple thumb motion perfectly fans out up to six cards for easy access to find everything you need. Plus, Groove Life just launched their new carbon fiber wallet, which has mm. everything you love about the original Groove Wallet. But with the added carbon fiber included, I think it looks great. It really does. It carbon fiber is a cool book. Groove Life makes a ton more than just wallets, and they've got belts, rings, watch bands, AirPod cases, and much, much more. Listen, pal, 2024. Now is the time to update your wallet game with Groove Life. Head to GrooveLife.com slash TMOS for 20% off all Groove Life products. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our link, GrooveLife.com slash TMOS for 20% off your order. I'm Cindy Lauper. No, no I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> hey, oh, there look. it is. There it is. I watched the... The uh, Kraken has lost over 120 pounds. Isn't that exciting? I watched the, uh, the uh, We Are the World documentary oh, cindy oh, lopper uh, prominently featured very prominently featured in that yes. really amazing beautifully done really really cool very very you know what exciting. the coolest thing about that is when you watch them do multiple takes and then you finally hear the take that's used yeah, and on you know the record it, and because we and played you know it, it so much i knew right exactly away. what the that huey lewis take i knew that was the one they were going to get and, and did he you was know great that, on that, that that huey was struggling to get that take it was so cool yeah when he finally nailed it yeah it was I fun recommend that Without reserve, will you anybody. say will you say hi to Santos real Hi, quick? He, he's Come like here. he's like so excited here, to see you. He loves you. Hey Rob, I have a question before we start the roundtable here uh, yeah. regarding your reaction because you're kind of an old softy like I am. Did you find yourself a couple of times getting a little verklempt during that documentary? Very much so. Okay, I Very was wondering much so. whether you had. And that I'm wondering reaction. if it was the same thing that got me that got you is an overall presentation of the way the popular music industry has changed. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that you would probably just never have... It could never happen again. ...that moment anymore. And that was a moment that made me want to get into radio. So cool. And radio I, doesn't I was exist so like young, anymore. I had no... Oh, it was so exciting. I have no concept of... I understand what a superstar is these days, and for all these superstars to get together, I get that and how momentous that is. And the idea that Bob Seger's, like, rolling in, rolling in, like, he's driving in, you know... Well, Bob Seger wasn't there, but he would have been Who's, good. Who, what white guy that was older was there? Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. That's what I meant. Okay. Yes, Kenny Rogers. And the thing about it. <laughs> Bob Seger the, Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Bob Two Seger. different men, Oscar. Glenn Bob Seger just, pulled just in. watching. Um, but the, <laughs> the idea of, of uh, I think for me, it was a, a real trip down memory lane because I was on the radio then. And yeah. who? You know, I remember which, 750 a.m. That's when we played it. That's when it, that's when it came which, on. Which country artist left because he said, I'm Waylon not singing racist Swa- I'm not, Jennings. I'm not, Jennings. Not swing, I'm, I'm not, not singing, singing Swah- no Swahili. Swahili. <laughs> and I never knew that. I never knew that happened. That's Can you explain? So, we're right. not spoiling anything. So the, the idea, uh, this is the documentary uh, called, I forgot what the title of it was, but it's about. The Greatest Night in Pop, The I Greatest believe. Night in Pop, Making of We Are the World. And they bring all these artists together, including country artists like Willie Nelson and Waylon Jennings. Yeah. And. Yep. The idea, uh, right at the beginning, they say two of the real problem children in this uh, enterprise will be Cindy Lauper and Stevie Wonder. And mm-hmm. it proved to be kind of true uh, because Stevie went off on a, on a tangent that yeah. there should be some uh, native uh, African language in the piece and uh, perhaps Swahili, and it's getting a little off the rails because he's singing some yeah. Swahili, and then Al Jarreau says, that's not Swahili. You're not saying it correctly. And then somebody says, that we're doing this for Ethiopia. They don't speak Swahili in Ethiopia. Anyway, it, it's turning into a CF, and, yeah. and Stevie's uh, singing some Swahili or what he thinks is Swahili, and at this point, Waylon Jennings just walks out of the studio. <laughs> yeah. I'm and not doing no Swahili. And does, you know? and it does was, not return. And it does, does not, not walks on the on the project. And, and Mike, just I weird. just one quick correction is Al Jarreau says they don't speak Swahili. Yeah, because Al Jarreau's getting S faced. That was <laughs> so embarrassing. It's, it was <laughs> The Greatest Night in Pop, is that the name of it? I believe it. Let me double check, but it's on Netflix check and it it's out. worthy it's, uh, of a can, 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 just really one good. other memorable moment because so, for someone that you know, remembers the artist, but yes. you know, it's a different take in my uh, through through my lens. I really didn't understand like 
why Quincy Jones wasn't prominently featured. Is he battling? Am I missing something? Is he battling? I think he is. I think he is not well. Okay, because like he was a key fat, like the key factor, the key factor the for us, and and there's no like uh, modern well, no modern footage of him. No, no, there uh, and that and, was well, sad. There were a few artists where they didn't have the modern uh, uh, yes. footage and. Uh, interesting omissions as far as I was concerned from still living artists that I, yeah. I found that a little strange. I found it strange that Bette Midler kind of shut out uh, yeah. for that project, you know? And not only, uh, wasn't Bette, was Bette Midler, Rob, in the song or not? Did she have a solo in the song? Did not have a solo, as I recall. That's, and that's yeah. probably why she said F that. I think there were yeah. a lot of bruised egos uh, when they were making that song, yep. uh, but they did a lot of good. And I got for Klempt just remembering uh, being on the radio during that that heyday, where uh, there were so many artists, you know, Billy Joel, Michael Jackson, Lionel Richie, uh, and and it was just a a very that cool time. Much Dan more. Dan Aykroyd. Da- Dan- <laughs> How did he? Just watching. Let's start the uh, round table. Here. He was there though. Oh yeah, yeah. He uh, was invited. It was a last minute thing. Uh, under the heading of uh, you know, you go, Buster. This come on over. Totally sucks. We start today with uh, one person killed, twenty-two others wounded yeah. in a shooting at the Kansas mm. City Chiefs Super Bowl victory parade. At least three of the wounded are in critical condition. Police have detained three people for questioning, but there is no word on a motive. The deceased uh, is Lisa Lopez Galvin. Of KKFI Radio. Does that mean she's a DJ? She Probably. She, she was, yes. I've read oh, about this. God. And uh, eight of those injured are children. No word yeah. on what the hell it was about. I don't know. An estimated uh, one million people gathered in downtown KC for the event. The shots rang out shortly after the end of the rally that followed the parade. The shots are so concentrated in the videos that I saw. I, I just cannot believe. It, it, if that was the only gunfire that was heard, which I think it was, it gives mm-hmm. you an idea of how much damage can be done in such in a nanosecond, in an yep. absolute fraction of a second. This uh, went down. Uh, some Chiefs players were still on the stage when it happened, uh, but no one associated with the uh, the team was injured. And then panic ensued. I I don't know if you saw some you of the saw clips. The, yeah. of I saw this. the footage of the um, of the citizen. Uh... The, the three or two or the three that tackled one of the, the tackled one suspects. Of the guys. Did, did yeah. you see the added footage on TMZ that they had? It looked to be someone perhaps hiding a gun. Did yes. you see that? I did that see that. Was I certainly? If that is the case, I certainly hope they get to the bottom of that because that is it's, it's lower an than embarrassment large. for our country, and it makes me think it, what they must. It's not new. I know it's not new, this, but it underscores what has already. Yeah, been Yeah, it there. happens. We just don't talk about it as much because you know but that's not what this the show's about it's anymore. Just a huge, but it's a huge celebration. Yeah, but and this, I, I have to wonder what people in other countries look at and think of us. Yeah, as a country. So it's just, just sad. And this is highlighted at a, a very high level. This, this happened at the last Super Bowl um, uh, or cha- World Championship um, parade. Yeah, the uh, basketball one. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, it's it's even harder. And we're coming off the heels of uh, having this conversation about how DC is in the safe as it used to be and doesn't feel as safe. And and I'm watching the news last night, the nightly news. It's a good uh, segue for that, Oscar. I think yeah, that's yeah. a good time and to bring that I up. And I hear this. Yep. Which is not something for the people that are of, saying like, these were talking points. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stephanie, thank you. We'll turn to another shooting. This one in Washington D.C. Three officers shot while serving a warrant at a home. Okay. A suspect barricaded inside tonight. As Garrett Hake reports, it's part of a surge in violence in the nation's capital. Shots fired. Yeah. So you get you get the the surge this in is violence what, in the nation's yeah. capital. Yeah. There it is. Uh, my mom called me yesterday. Uh, and said, are you okay? And I said, what's going on? And this is just like what parents do. Yeah. yeah. You know, she says, she's like, I heard there's like, you know, streets shut down. And I, I quickly go to uh, the, a, new, a local news website and um, and I see that this the story had just broken in the morning. Um, these officers were just going in to serve a warrant on animal cruelty. Uh-huh. And this guy opened fire. Yeah. Weird world. Like, yeah. Of all the things, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, it's uh, it's we live in interesting times. That's the only thing I can say. I know yeah. that's a cop mm-hmm. out line, but I got to tell you, that's the way no, I, it's, it's I look at true. it now. I used to uh, 
Uh, I used to uh, get gray hairs about it, and uh, I wish I still did, but I can't. I can't do that to myself anymore. No, no, no. Um, uh, but really, when you think, the only question that pops to mind, because I get more uh, matter-of-fact and clinical about these shootings now, I really do, especially when there's something unknown, was there any chance whatsoever that this mother of two, the uh, radio personality, was targeted? Is that? No. No. Random. No, she was there for the celebration. But also not a wingnut that was trying to kill as many people as he could, just maybe an altercation of some kind. They and... said that, that this might be gang-related. Uh, we don't know yet. Okay. All right, we'll see. We'll see what yeah. happens. And the way the Figure gun was hidden uh, yeah. or allegedly hidden uh, would speak to that as well. We have to yeah. you know, sit tight and find, find out what's happening. But, you know, uh, when you think, and I remember the Red Sox parade of 2004 after the, uh, my, my whole family up in Boston went to the parade. And it was just such a cool event. And you think it, that is such a kid-centric event. Yes. That's yes. what dads bring their kids to. That's what moms bring their Can kids to. Can we take to. off of school for yeah. this? Can we go? It's like with these moments of and some of when the F. Patriots, my, my brother took off of work and yep. uh, you know took the day and took his son to the Patriots parade doesn't with their kids, right? Doesn't matter yeah. with the all-powerful gun. Yeah. Doesn't matter at all. And uh, very, very sad and uh, just... Really hope against hope they get to the bottom of it and find out yeah. what's happening. Not yeah. that that's going to bring that lady back at all. Uh, all right. What do I file this under? This next story here. I will file this under uh, <laughs> what's wrong with people. Okay. All right. I don't know if you know about this one. Two kids from Colorado were just awarded the first ever athletic scholarship to play Division One Cornhole. Oh. Stupid. Their names are Jackson with an X, Remick, and Gavin Hammond. They uh, went to Thunder Ridge High School in Denver, which has a strong cornhole program, I guess. Uh, they're obviously cornhole prodigies. They won the first ever high school championship together in 21. This is new. And then another one a year later. Uh, on National Signing Day, that's a big thing at my kid's school yes. as well. On National Signing Day, they signed letters of intent to play D1 Cornhole for Winthrop University in South Carolina. It's a it's thing. It's good because the, uh, the game of Cornhole has uh, never been associated with drinking. And I think it is a good thing that colleges are grabbing on. Yeah. Where this is what's fascinating to me. Yeah. I want to <laughs> I want to hate on this. <laughs> but I also know that there are gaming scholarships given out. I know. For video games? Yep. Yes. You're absolutely right. Like who what's the difference? That you... if there is an economy behind and in that industry and I've seen competitive cornhole a game Really? Yeah, you know who I have I seen it on you, ESPN too. That's a valid point. I will agree with you, even though I didn't yeah. intend to agree with you. I will say that when you're talking about it's football, golf, basketball. If there is an economy that drives, yeah. yes, they're entertainment. So yeah, cornhole but, but is you, entertainment. So I wish cornhole wasn't named cornhole. It's yes. an unfortunate name, right? Because <laughs> I played a different type of game Stop. at WVU. If you know what I mean. Rob, you know who's behind this, Mike. Name. It's big corn. <laughs> you mean maize? <laughs> I do, as your oh, people call God. it. It's maize. The, uh, <laughs> grande maize. The school has said uh, how much the scholarship is for, but it's uh, not, yeah, a, it's it's not a full not ride. Yeah, it's not a full ride. Uh, no. their, their new coach at Winthrop, coach, uh, thinks full ride scholarships for cornhole <laughs> could happen eventually. I but certainly their hope head so. coach is Al Jarreau. <laughs> I, I, I and, but, do you, but do you do you remember? This isn't as crazy, but do you remember? Like I, 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 I just recall my parents yelling at me about playing video games. Yeah, and I, I didn't I have a good. I, I didn't games. have a good like. Yeah, well, there's scholarships for this, right? <laughs> yeah. If oh, I wow. had that retort, oh my god! Oh, the gaming what? with my son. Yeah. Yes, Dad. you know, Rob, Robert's paid. <laughs> Robert's paid internship is doing a uh, press and public relations for the video game team. Well, that's at different. WVU. That's a valid thing because you're yeah. talking about marketing a product. So that's yeah, got but, yeah, but for a video base. game team at a, video at, game divi team. Oh, a division a one school. Yeah, a division yeah. one team for a school. Yeah, big money. It's big money. Say hey. 
It is. You know? Uh, you know? Interesting stuff. It really is. All right, I've got my favorite story uh, that I want to share with you right Excellent. now. Excellent. Uh, Sarah Snook, she played Shiv in Succession. Yeah. Remember her? Uh, she says her co-star, Brian Cox, ball <laughs> on the floor, uh, had a habit of flying into, as she puts it, diabetic rages on the set. And it could be terrifying because of his thunderous voice. I'm Mm. in a diabetic rage. (laughs) Uh, So funny. But she's not sure he was being totally serious. Quote, I think part of it is a little trying to just jolt the energy of the set and rustle a few feathers, get it going and moving faster. Cox has admitted in the past that his diabetes makes him hangry. Quote, this is from Brian Cox. All right. I need my food, and I don't. then I don't like my food, so I have a very complicated relationship with food. <laughs> hey, we've all been there. I don't, you know what? I think that uh, it's probably not entirely diabetes related. My dad has had type 1 for years and years. Yeah. When he gets too low or too high, he doesn't go into a rage. He checks out. So in what I way? Mean, like he passes. I mean, out? like, he, well, he, he he has passed out. I've seen him have a hard time forming sentences. Oh, he, he zones out completely. Yeah, he zones out completely. Right. So I'm wondering if his diabetic rage could be based in that he doesn't want to get there, mm-hmm. or maybe he's just an actor. <laughs> I don't know. We'll never know. We'll probably never know could the answer an actor. to that. That's yeah. the way that goes. Finally, today, many people hope they leave this life having accomplished something. And this man definitely did that. Uh, This past Saturday, Bill Post passed away at the age of 96. He is the man who invented Pop-Tarts. And we've all had them. And we've all, yes. Yes, Yes, he deserves a round of applause. Amen. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into Pop-Tarts till till college you know it's a it's a it's a solid product it, it's it really a go-to is. snack it's a treat i don't consider it like a real breakfast food i consider it yeah. a treat uh back in the early 60s bill was working with kellogg's he initially called them fruit scones but that was soon changed to pop fruit. tarts as Hello. as a play <laughs> on the then popular pop art movement that's uh, funny. And uh, so what's the name? Bill Post. At the time of his death, Bill was uh, extremely thin uh, with just a little bit of jam inside of him. <laughs> sorry. Mike. I'm sorry. That's the... Yeah, they were always too thin. Yeah. I can't eat this crap. It's too goddamn thin. Do you have diabetic rage? I have diabetic rage. Well, you... I've, I've been waiting to eat my lunch for six hours. You bring me an epic pop star? <laughs> Take a break. Stone. Come back with more on the Michael Mary Show. Fruit scone. Fuel your peak performance with four wellness. I, uh, I saw Rob and uh, and Oscar. Yeah, we were fighting over, fighting the, brownie. over the brownies. The ultimate I functional won. food brand, Four Wellness, founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. It's a game-changing performance coffee supplement. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop for enhanced focus, reduce caffeine jitters, uh, yep. increase collagen and fat-burning support. But that's not all. Dive into their recovery gummies packed with antioxidants and electrolytes. Perfect. Perfect for pre-workout or post-golf recovery. Need a sweet treat? Try the Superfood Focus Bites. That's the one you guys were Boom, like, bam. arguing about. Yeah. I Show loved it. I had it. It's an empty wrapper. Tastes like Sorry, a chocolate brownie. Wait. Unleash your yeah. full potential with gummy. Four no, I'll have a Wellness. Gummy. Thank you. So if you drink coffee, it's time to give Four ah. Wellness a try. Head to fourwellness.com slash TMOS and use the code TMOS for 25% off your order. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this Fruit is an scones. interesting story I want to talk about because I love a good uh, person that holds a grudge. It's fun to oh. me. It really, really, really is fun. Rob says, uh, for those uh, that like uh, Hollywood nostalgia, Warren Beatty. Uh, in his day, the heartthrob of heartthrobs, the it guy in Hollywood, hasn't done much in quite some time. He's up there. Probably 80-ish, I would think, right? He is, uh, but, but if it says here, Probably he's uh, 85. 85. 85. Yeah, that's amazing. I wonder what he looks so like So he's been now. around a long time. Been around now, a while. if you go back um, in 1990, this kind of probably predates Oscar a little bit. He made that Dick Tracy movie. Oh, I hated that movie. I loved oh, it. I thought it was really? great. Yes, I thought it was so much fun to watch. Oh, God, the colors like and everything. It was and a I like the notion would, that he, he was- had some of the most hyped movies 
of yep. all time. You want to talk about studio backing? Dick Tracy was one, mm-hmm. and then the legendary flop Ishtar. Yes, oh, I'd forgotten Hoffman about that. Yeah, was amazingly promoted, and it laid a big stinky egg. It was terrible. Well, I might not be the only one who loved Dick Tracy because Warren Beatty loved Dick Tracy, and well, he, he was wa- in it, right? Yeah, but I mean, he wanted to make he a was sequel. Dick Tracy. Yeah, he wanted to try to make a television show, and everyone shut him down. So, this is where the grudge comes in. He reads the fine print of his project, and as long as every few years he does a Dick Tracy project, he gets to retain the rights of the Dick Tracy character. Mm. So what I didn't know is that ever since 1990, every few years, he does like a 20-minute, no-budget sequel to Dick Tracy, and now he's found a place. They run it. Well, where, where on, is it? How can we never hear about it? Because they run it on Turner Classic Movies once in the overnight just to make it count as a sequel. He actually went to the court to say, what do I have to do to make this count as a sequel? Mac, let us see this uh, beautiful. Oh, great. Uh, this is from Turner Classic Movies. The plot this year is that he's complaining to uh, Warren Beatty himself. But also Leonard Maltin Who's and Ben Mankiewicz. What, what? Dick Tracy. He's playing oh, Dick, Dick Tracy's Tracy. Tracy's complaining to Warren Beatty. And, and uh, Mankiewicz and Leonard Maltin. And this is uh, a great way to hold a grudge. Okay. All criminals are rats. Should be treated Your call is on the Zoom, Mr. Maltin. Your training is just beginning. Now it's up to you. Work hard. Train hard. Because when you're a full-fledged agent, you'll have to fight hard. Ralph Bird is inspiring. There's just nobody like Ralph Bird. I mean, Ralph Bird, Ralph Bird was... Detective Tracy, um, sorry, may we put you on hold for a minute? He's 90, practically 90 years old. Uh, hello? Uh, hello. 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 And now Warren yeah, Beatty Are you there, in. sir? Oh, my God. Uh, what, I, uh, I'm, I'm here. Is it, who is that? Is that Ben Mankiewicz? It is indeed. <laughs> How are you? Fine, uh, thanks. <laughs> oh, Leonard, this is so sad. how are you? It's been a while. I have an old friend or uh, acquaintance of yours here. Oh, really? What? Who? <laughs> and now he pops up as Dick Tracy in wow. the yellow coat. So he does uh, all this to hold a grudge. We haven't spoken in a while. Yeah, to prevent anyone else. Detective Tracy, how I can are you? See why they uh, run in the I'm middle of the night. Fine, Mr. Yeah. Baby, yeah, how are fine. you? I even I'm do this. Fine, thank you. <laughs> this Long is terrible. To see. Or. Here. Do we have to keep watching? No, no, you can kill okay. it, but I just wanted you to see it. But Do I love the fact. We have to keep watching it. I mean, it's so, because it's of his contract, translate. the fact that he did that, he gets to retain all control of all Dick Tracy product until 2027 now, which is when it goes into the public domain. So, so like, uh, do they still sell swag from dick tracy i would imagine yes. they do right uh-huh. and does that mean gets comic the money books from as that. well or i don't think they do dick tracy comic books anymore right. but i know that disney plus was trying to launch a disney uh show about dick tracy with chris pratt and because he made that zoom call <laughs> video and it legally counts as a sequel to dick tracy disney plus can't touch it so in 1990 someone pissed off warren Beatty. And he's still holding a so that, That's interesting. 34 years That's later. That's FU money, right? Yeah, it is. Like, he doesn't need the money. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't need care. The, he doesn't need the gigs. He's yeah. got all the money uh, that he will ever need. And so he does this just like uh, nobody else is going to. If I can't do it, if I couldn't do the TV show uh, 40 years ago, no one gets to do the TV show. That right. is fascinating. And it is. It is. Almost, as Oscar says, unwatchable. There's zero effort Almost. put into it. That was terrible. And I mean, in this one, he didn't even come into the studio. He zoomed in. But in the eyes of the courts, this counts as a sequel, so he gets to retain yeah. he, the right. He's like a patent troll. Yes, and he's he is. got the he's in cahoots with uh, Turner Classic Movies. Well, of course, because, because they're they have much it, to right? benefit. They, there has to be some they, kind of deal well, there. I mean, they have right, come all, on for free. Yep. They have all of the, you know, his back catalog. <laughs> so if they want to do a night where they feature Warren Beatty and so like what shampoo and heaven can wait and all of his early classics, they call him up and said, hey, we helped you out with Dick Tracy. You come on in and host this. And if you don't know, Oscar, uh, Warren Beatty back in the day, a notable oh, swordsman. Mm. 
Uh, oh, yeah. I've heard. Yeah, yeah. Annette Benning, right? Oh, yeah. Everyone. Yeah, they I remember it, Madonna. They were the it couple. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. that's yeah. right. Madonna. Very, good. Yeah. very good. I've I'm studied proud. all yeah. the sorts. That's wonderful. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> You've studied them. And his big sister is Shirley MacLaine. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, and there you have it. All anyway, right. so yeah. good for you, Warren Beatty. I like when people screw with that's people. Very, that's very, very, very cool that he's doing that. And I think Ben Mackowitz is kind of a cool guy. We're both I TCM fans, so that's uh, that's kind of neat. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, and we are going to talk about one of the last greats that's uh, another guy in his 80s. Seems to be a theme of today's show. you got, uh, you know, Warren Beatty. Well, Rob's here. The guy I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Not that old. <laughs> Nostalgia. Uh, we'll be right back, everybody. Listen, if you are ready to shed 26% of your weight, let's go. Let's uh, go. DermGlowSkin.com, the ultimate destination for uh, conquering your weight. Uh, just take a quiz on the website and discover if you qualify. Uh, I've written posts about this. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, wearing a, a pair of pants that I never thought I'd wear again. I'd never thought that I would have a small enough waist to, and I certainly never thought that I would be wearing a uh, about two inches longer pant. I don't know where that happened, but I, I'm wearing slimmer pants, and I get noticed, and it is a gratifying feeling for people to make sometimes a joke, uh, and sometimes a serious comment, including the, at my kid's football game the other night when I hadn't seen this guy in about a year. It's like, what the hell happened to you? That is <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing can describe that. If you want to do the uh, weight loss uh, procedure that I have, it's not a procedure, it's a, actually a medication that I'm on, all you have to do is go to dermglowskin.com. Now, when you click on the weight loss button, you take a quick quiz on the website and you discover if you qualify. Experienced doctors will prescribe the right medication and your weight loss solution will be delivered directly to your doorstep. Just ask Debbie Carano O'Brien. Tired of waiting due to low stocks? Dermglow ensures that you're connected with well-supplied doctors, eliminating any delays. It's a great time to start. From now until March 15th, you can get a $300 discount on your Terzipatide subscription. That's the medication that I take. So act fast, and now your medicine can even be shipped to Puerto Rico. Muy bueno. I've experienced life-changing results, and uh, I just received a sympathy card from my bathroom scale. It said, sorry for your loss. <laughs> That's thin. <laughs> Almost makes me want to stop the commercial. Uh, your no, future no. awaits you. Visit Derm Glow Skin. Click the way. You... All right, we're done. We uh, do the, the, Thank the, you. the whole day. Uh, one of the greats, Vern Lundquist, will be calling his last Masters, uh, and that will be coming up in uh, April when we go to Augusta and, uh, and view that incredible telecast. Vern Lundquist, all these old guys. Yeah. Seemingly, the ones that have survived, the ones that have last, they know – how to handle the moments. They know how to say a very brief snippet of dialogue and then let the moment carry it. Uh, the greatest one in the history of uh, golf was probably Tiger Woods chip in on 16 at Augusta where Vern, who's been there for a million years, chipped in at have you ever seen in your lifetime, will you ever see? Mm -hmm. And he's just great at it. And when someone told me that he was in his late 70s a few years back and still getting it done, you forget because yeah. sports casting is timeless. You forget these guys. It's a, it's a line of work that I think they have such passion for that these guys really go till they practically drop. You know, you got your hair. I think carries. they love it. You know, it's yeah, just, they love it and they so stay with he'll it. be doing the last one. And uh, if you've never heard him, uh, you know, look up. Uh, Vern Lundquist Masters Moments. There's probably some, a lot of stuff on YouTube that you uh, you can get, and it's really, really quality stuff. He'll be uh, 84 this July, and his real given name is Merton Laverne Lundquist Jr. Do you do a, um, an I impression? Don't. I don't. It's, it's a straight baritone with a deep baritone that they have in your lifetime. Have you ever heard it? And, uh, you know, that's I know who that guy is. Oh, it's, he's fantastic. He is as much of the game when you watch golf and is one of the sports that I will put on occasionally really? on a Sunday afternoon. Great yeah. napping sport. It's a great napping sport. But he's as much as part of the broadcast as the the greens and the fairway. Yeah. And yeah. when you hear his voice, mm -hmm. it doesn't you're not screaming. It's not, you know, a Super Bowl victory, but he is part of the tapestry of golf. Yeah, and that's is. a voice you associate and with. And the it. thing is that I always as go ahead. part of it as I'm sorry, Jim Nance. Probably not. 
uh, you know, it's, not anymore. It's he just, was. It's interesting stuff. It really is. You know, and he, this is Vern Lundquist calling the uh, moment. OK, we talking. just listen to the audio. We're not going to play the video. He's chipping up on the 16th. Almost impossible with the way the green is uh, flowing here. And here's Vern Lundquist with the call. Well, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Have you seen anything like that? Well, that's it. That entire that's sequence it. was like, um, you know, you could they could say, hey, this is known swordsman, Vern Lundquist. <laughs> that's right. That's Warren Beatty. Yeah. But he did have the three-way with Warren Beatty. Known swordsman. And I hey. think Natalie Wood. <laughs> nice. A lot of time and, on the road. Maybe you're right. Yeah, and you know what? When he finished, when he finished, he said, "Have you ever in your life?" <laughs> oh, oh my God! Oh God! The Vern Lundquist is a uh, is a, a true a true legend. College football guy too. Does a lot, a lot yeah, of CBS yeah. stuff. That's uh, yeah, that's yeah. what he did. So, if uh, it's CBS, is he retiring or has he been fired? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, talk about, uh, brand new bowling technique. I'm sorry to make it about me, but I have to share this with you, all right? The bowling technique I have now, there's a little guy we're bowling against last night. And this guy walks up, and I call it the I don't give an S style of mm -hmm. bowling. And what he does is the really good bowlers, as Rob will tell you, Oscar, will curve the ball and they will smash into the pins and with a lot of torque and a lot of spin. Mm -hmm. Amazing and they'll explode. Yeah. I, due to my lack of coordination, have not been able to master that in any way, shape, or form. When I try to hook the ball, it, it hooks a little bit, but not a lot. Not a lot. And it's, uh, it's frustrating for me because I just can't do it. This dude, little bit of a guy. Little bit of a guy. A and shaver, kind of, Mike. A little uh, shaver. But he's uh, by 30, 40 years old, whatever. I don't know. And he's like kind of uh, mopey, mopey, nice guy. Mm -hmm. And he takes the ball and he just flings it. And it's mm -hmm. in the air almost halfway down the line. So it, oh, it kind of oh, wow. lands and bounces. And then I watch him bowl a strike. And then I watch mm -hmm. him bowl another strike. And then I watch him bowl. And he's not curving the ball. He's just saying. So the ball goes <laughs> down the lane. So. With a little liquid courage, I uh, I might have overdone it a little bit last night. I might have no. overdone it a lot. I mean, a lot last what night. What was your poison? Guinness. Ah, followed by Irish whiskey. Uh -huh. That Mike, you know better than this. And then looking at Carla uh, as she's coming back from uh, bowling her frame, and looking at her like this. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You've made my life oh, so much. Never leave me. You, you, you've made my. You've made my life so much better. And then you noticed your face and you said, turn away, I'm hitting Turn away. <laughs> I'm molting. I, I am not an animal. I am not an animal. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a human being. Please don't look at me. I'm hideous. Uh, and so I chuck it down, and lo and behold, I, uh, I, not, I got one strike. And then missed every other shot after that. But you know, Mike, this goes loaded. back to a piece of advice that I gave you: is get it out in front of you. That's what uh, you that's what noted that. swordsman <laughs> Warren Beatty said too. <laughs> Always get it out in front of you. That's the key. Isn't that right, Vern? Yes. In your lifetime, have you ever seen a swordsman like Warren Beatty, Madonna, and Annette Benning? At the same time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I finally got the Vern. That's it. We got to take a break. Uh, you got time for it? You got a fat uh, flip side for us? Big and fat and thick and wondrous. Very, very exciting. Oh, uh, we've got time for that. And I love swordsman. One of my favorite words. Uh, we Stop will take it. a break. And when we come back, Tiger Woods on the 16th at Augusta. I'm Jim Nance. So long, Vern. Michael Mara out. Hi, everybody.
got to tell you about something, something really important, Naked Wines. It's the yeah. subscription service that links you directly to the world's best independent winemakers. Enjoy a case of top quality wines at a fraction of the store price, up to 60% off by connecting winemakers to wine enthusiasts like you. Naked Wines cuts out middlemen, ka -ching. Love that you can answer a few questions when you order, and they will instantly match you with a perfect pour for your taste. The cabs I got were extraordinary. I like saying that like a British person. The cabs that I received on my doorstep were extraordinary, and I enjoyed my first glass with a fresh-picked strawberry. Uh, in the off chance you don't like a bottle, they'll give you a, a credit so you can find one you love. Naked Wine sure is fine. It's wine time with Naked Wine. Naked <laughs> Wine sure is fine. You'll understand why always time is wine time. So head to nakedwines.com slash TMOS and click enter voucher in the top right when you get to the website. Then enter TMOS for both the code and the password to get six bottles of wine for just $39.99. Shipping included. That's $100 off and less than seven bucks a bottle. That is a deal, people. Wine of this quality at this price. Don't miss out. And cheers. And thank you, David Robertson. Yes, he just joined up this week. That's Hello. good. Very exciting. So. Oscar, were you taking a selfie? No, I was taking a picture of you uh, because uh, I got a text saying, is Rob in studio? And I said, Here he here's is. photo evidence. Okay, well, you were smiling really big. So yes. I why were they asking selfie. if Rob's in studio? Because Rob is going to run a production right after. No, but I mean, what, why were this... they asking? Uh, uh, oh, is that somebody from uh, your office? Podville, yes, yes, okay. yes. So instead of All saying right. yes, I just took a picture and I said, here he is. And here he is. Mm -hmm. Here he is. Very exciting. So, Mike, I know we discussed, sadly, the tragedy at the victory parade yeah. uh, for the Chiefs, but that didn't stop the Chiefs themselves from having a good time, and you can't blame them because they didn't know what was going on. Is this on. the Travis Kelsey thing? Yes, uh, and along with uh, Patrick Mahomes singing sort of, I think they sort of planned to do karaoke. I think. God, who cares? But is this didn't after the exactly... celebration or parade or before this or This is during? after the parade when they're on stage. Oh, by the way, can I just insinuate Prior one to the here? shooting. Yes, yes. Prior to the shooting, but then they show Travis Kelsey going into a restaurant after the shooting. It's like, well, you know what? F people for doing that to Travis Kelsey. Look, I know the guy is scrutinized, but don't make it like he is somehow less effective. He's Kansas City. Uh, right, uh, right. Because he is going into a restaurant. Life does, unfortunately, after a no. tragedy, go on. What is he supposed to do? Yeah, what yeah. the hell is he supposed to do, yeah. people? Lay off. That's my opinion. Well, I think if he went into a restaurant, he might have been looking for the restroom. I'm just guessing. Yeah, uh, yeah he's anyway, a little loopy, uh, right? What's great is that he and Patrick Mahomes sing, and this is a moment captured on video that they will never regret. Coach is banging the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up again for your Super Bowl 58 champion, Kansas City Chiefs. No, 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 we ain't done yet. It's one guy that's needed. His name is Big Daddy Travis Kelsey. Cut that. I want everybody a part of this thing. <laughs> yeah. If you Jeez. know this song, sing along. <laughs> Blame it all on my roots. I showed up in boots and ruined the Niners affair. Oh, he is <laughs> The last one to know. <laughs> we were the last one to show. We were the last ones they thought they'd see there. Mr. Swift. Yeah. And I saw the surprise. He's reading the lyrics off his that phone. That fear in the eyes. And we took that glass of champagne. Pat, Pat took that glass of they champagne. They work very hard it. during the season. They do. And they play hard, yes. Do you remember, of all the things <laughs> I've that seen? that was nice. <laughs> During was it during yeah it was during the the Bucks uh, Super Bowl celebration when they were chucking the Lombardi Trophy <laughs> yes. from oh from yeah when they threw it back to Brady yeah. and it would have yes. gone in the drink 
Yes, I, it was amazing. They because they, they, you know, it's it's a it tradition. And the, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're as young my guys, father said, with testosterone getting loaded. What the hell? As my father said, Brady doesn't care. He's got like five of them at home. <laughs> <laughs> now, while we're talking about Travis Kelsey, he is sober in this tape. But I found this fascinating. It leaked sometime yesterday. I think it's because of NFL Films. He was mic'd up in the post game. Travis Kelsey was. So we get to hear what he said to. Taylor Swift. This is cool. After the game. So I just think it's interesting that neither said, I love you. Who okay. cares? Uh, thank you for oh, coming, baby. I can't believe that. Thank I you. I can't believe you. I thank you for the support. You. How do you thank you for that? coming. <laughs> thank you for making it across that way across the world. You're the best, baby. Oh, my God. The absolute best. Was it electric? It yes. was unbelievable. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's and fine. that's a portion of the, the clip. Like, if you watch the full clip. Yeah. Uh, this whole ruse about this was set up by the NFL is BS. Yeah, they do appear very fond of each other. Appear. <laughs> Rob, this well, guy. He, are you in the Trip Affleck camp? What? That it's fake? That it's no, fake no, for I her? Think that I think they're the, dating. She, that she's the, uh, the ice princess? That she's I don't the think she's the ice incarnate. princess, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I think Trip, by the way, keep those coming. Trip they get very catty. Trip, Meow. I love Trip when he's catty. I absolutely yeah. love I was it. Like, I enjoy are you those trolling posts. us. <laughs> Come on. No, so Mike. she can date another guy that she can ruin it. Every celebrity. I, they're fantastic. When he gets yeah. his fangs out, it's fun. <laughs> she did a great job of ruining him. He uh, had such a lousy year, Travis Kelsey. Uh, Catonsville, Mike. Dateline Catonsville, which, as you know, is a suburb of Baltimore. Hello. Hi, UNBC. Um, this was on their news. This lady is 109 years old. God bless her. And the sad thing is, is I know they wanted to celebrate her life, but what they She'll did in this She'll be calling her clip, last uh, masters. <laughs> she's a swordsman, Mike. <laughs> Just call back. All right, go ahead. Um, what makes me sad is that 109, she's basically now weekend at Bernie's. This is a woman of few words, but when asked how she wanted to spend her birthday, that came easy. Bingo, of course. I'm 25. When it's bingo, I'm she's here. Five. She's the bingo queen. She can't hear it, but somebody sits with her and helps her. And but she does 35. good. She looks at the board and she and sees the numbers. So then she follows the, follows the game. And she wins. A favorite amongst her peers, she's winning all around. She's friends That's with all. everyone. Thank you, Mac. Winning. She's winning all around. Winning. She looks at the board, but she can't hear. Right. And she and can't someone play. else moves the pieces. And, you know, I'm in no hurry to die, we but if I get to that Bernie's. point. Is that yours? That was mine. <laughs> Mike. I'm in no hurry to die, but if I get to that point, yeah. go ahead and go ahead and put me down. Something painless, <laughs> but put me down. That's your responsibility. Of course, if I'm 109, right. you're going to be mm -hmm. 124. Yeah, yeah. I'll be a tree. <laughs> Mac and I will take care of it. I'll be, Mac, I'll be like yeah, a, I think I'll be a rhododendron. <laughs> and um, I love that. A skinny uh, one. <laughs> yes, thank you. Skinny dendron. I love that uh, in the modern age, Early clips of stars can just pop up from anywhere. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, I loved Double Bubble. Uh, I'm sorry, not Double Bubble. Bubble Yum. Bubble Yum Ooh, was a great yeah, Well, bubble. which was it? To. Which did you it love? Was, it was Bubble Yum because Bubble Yum was a softer gum. And it For was a chunk tea. gum. That's right. It's, well, they weren't, so, they weren't soft before the gum. No, they were gum soft what in made general. Them. Don't you have soft teeth? I do. I have very soft teeth. Right. And Are they course. sensitive? Are they sensitive teeth? They're uh, two insults. <laughs> the uh, this is a classic double a bubble yum commercial with Leo DiCaprio, and the amazing thing is, is at this time he was dating Elle McPherson. Keeps it pop. <laughs> this is a chunk of super soft bubble yum bubble gum. This is a loud thumping two pumping boom box. Both are known for blast. The yum is the fun that never blows out. Big mouth busting bubble yum keeps it popping. Man, so that's I mean, high kid. budget commercial. Even back then, the guy had star yep. power. That must have cost millions of dollars to make. Wow. But remember, Hubba Bubba didn't stick to your face. I don't remember that gum was their, as, that as, was their as, as uh, detailed as you do, but I remember gum that. was hot for a while. Mm -hmm. That bubble, bubble yum was more expensive. Yeah, because it was chunks. It wasn't sticks. Yeah, yeah. when I was a yeah. kid, I chewed tobacco. Could you blow bubbles? Yep.
Mike was a saliva lady. bubbles with his little pouch. <laughs> saliva bubbles. Yep. Saliva. You know what's funny? Brown saliva bubbles. Mike, it's very funny because that lady in Catonsville also blows saliva bubbles. Yes, she does, but out of right she... nostril. <laughs> oh, what are we God. doing? All right, what let's are, close with this. Uh, Mike, I call it the aquarium miracle. Researchers at an aquarium in North Carolina have reported that a female stingray is pregnant despite being in a tank without any male stingrays. It's the biggest miracle at the aquarium since the Sturgeon Mary. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I will be submitting jokes to Seth Meyers yeah. all week. Oh, wow. All right, we got to get Mike, out of here. Mike, that's all I got. Uh, enjoy your day, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be uh, back with a uh, bonus show. You know that? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Tomorrow. Uh, so please subscribe, donate, buy our products, and we're delighted to have you here. And we appreciate every little bit of support that we can get. That's what keeps this show chugging along ladies and gentlemen and for all of you who care about that god bless you real good for rob spiewak and oscar santana mike o'mara saying so long everybody bubbles ciao ciao want more make sure you check out the mike o'mara bonus show get it at michaelmarashow.com mike o'mara radio entertainment that's it that's all you got for me up here you candy ass clown Come on, bitch! Uh, Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Where's the money?